If John says that Jesus is the only begotten, just like we read in John 3.16, right, out of the KJV, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, this phrase monogenous, or monogenes, the original Greek, if Jesus is begotten, and the way that humans beget one another is to bring them into existence through the birthing process, right? Male and female get together and out comes a baby. That's begetful. If that's true, then perhaps Jesus was not eternal existing with the Father, is what some um, uh, fringe groups and some um, heretical groups and some different ways of, of understanding this passage. Perhaps maybe Jesus was brought into existence and God quote-unquote birthed him that is say created him and that's why he's the begotten son that's why we're having this discussion that's why it's relevant for us uh just fyi if we go over to um uh john i'm sorry psalm 2 and look at it uh we can see i've got hebrew pulled up here and i've got greek pulled up here and uh in the in the hebrew there's a phrase right here yelidika uh, where the psalmist says, I have uh, I have begotten you. Uh, literally, I have the same, the, just the standard phrase for uh, for having children, right? Um, which is what, uh, uh, in the English, it says, I fathered you, kind of kind of a KJV rendering. But when we, we can see from the Septuagint that there's a, a Greek word that's uh, used here, right down there, uh, and this, um, this phrase, is rooted in the same word as monogenes. It's got the same genes part to it, um, which means begotten or how you bring children into the world. So it is true that the psalmist could have been using that that phraseology that was common in that day to beget children. But um, let's let Tim Haig uh, explain what I think is a very strong uh, case that could be made as to how a better way to understand this. And then that will close out our commentary for tonight and we'll close in prayer. Okay, I think we're going just a little bit over in time. So, speaking of begotten, that we read about in Psalm 2, that we read about in John 1, uh, 14 and John 1, 16 later on, and speaking of um, the phrase that shows up in John 3, 16, this begotten, does it mean, the question that was before us tonight, that we're going to answer hopefully, is does begotten mean that Jesus was created by God, that he was brought into existence by God, or does it refer to something else that was already present in the mind of the Hebrews, in the present in the mind of John as he worked through the Septuagint Greek, things like that. Let's listen to Tim Haig. I think he's got a, an angle that's worth our listening to. Tim Haig says, uh, speaking about whether or not this is referring to um, Jesus being eternal or not, we call this a, le- a study in ontology, right? How do we understand the nature of God? That's ontological nature. Tim Haig talks about how that such ontological wrangling was not what the biblical authors had in mind. That's kind of a shocker right out of the gate, is that perhaps that's not even what um, John's referring to. It may not be what what God is talking about the psalmist in Psalm 2. He's not bringing in a debate as to whether Jesus was eternal or not when he says, Today I have begotten thee. He's not talking about, let me explain to you, the psalmist. He's not trying to explain, hey, this is how Jesus' existence came to be. <laughs> it's not a discussion about ontology. Rather, and Tim Hague talks about, surely the desire of the church fathers to confess both the eternal and incarnational nature of Messiah is to be applauded, but the emphasis in the word monogenes is not so much ontological as it is relational, for it denotes a unique status and position which Yeshua has with the Father. Even as a son shares the same nature with his father, but has an identity distinct from him, so the use of monogenes denotes oneness with the Father, while at the same time maintaining their distinct identities. So Jesus is one with the Father, he, but yet he is his own person.